Okay, uh, rendering with your own image. Okay, so what if no, in the floor or in the walls or whatever, we want to apply an image of our own interest. So that's also relatively simple. So let's go for it. Let's see. Well, the first thing is what image? That would be the question. So I'm going to go to Photoshop or actually the deal will be to Google or any search engine and say the material that you want. So I'm going to do it a couple of times, record both options. Let's say a pattern of a color. You know, the image. Uh, here we talked about it in the past, but make sure that you have actually a good image. That's the first question you you should uh, make sure you you corroborate. So under tools, you can have the size large to make sure that the image you select are large quality, something important. Now, whether you want this one or any other thing, that's up to you. Um, I recommend that you don't have watermarks or you know, copyright uh, watermarks on top. So, you know, just choose something that it's, uh, it's good. Now, everything is under copyright. So make sure if there's an image that you want to say, this is by this person, that you will put it on the panel somewhere. Okay, so make sure you you give um, recognition to the persons. So I'm gonna save as, I recommend always JPEG. I'm not sure if PNG is gonna work nice. So if it says PNG, just give it a try to a different image. Uh, if you can download it to PD, PNG and then go to Photoshop as well, obviously, and, and just save as, which is very simple. I just don't have the time now. So I'm going to search for a, ah, okay, I'll do it, whatever. So again, I'm doing PNG, you can do PNG, uh, sorry, PNG and you can do JPEG. So I'm gonna go to Photoshop, here we go. Open that image that I just downloaded. Here we go. Okay, so I don't think this is a good resolution, but anyway, I'm going to use it. The better resolution, the better, the, the better for your results. I'm going to save as and make sure it's a PNG, uh, JPEG, sorry. So JPEG, and then I'm going to call it a new Material. You don't have to do this if it's a JPEG already. Uh, okay, so I can go back to Revit. And if you wanna do it like super dummies, uh, it's no much, no much time you need to dedicate. So you select the walls, edit type. Again, we duplicate it, so I'm not gonna do it again. And under the finish interior, I'm gonna say instead of red paint, I'm gonna create a new material. New material. Right click, rename, and I'm going to call it something like pattern color wall map. Okay, so there we have a new material. I'm not going to select, uh, you know, any of these options because it's not there. I'm going to find it there. This is a very particular material that I'm doing. So I'm going to do my own. I'm going to go to appearance. And under appearance, this is a standard. So you can change the colors we did here, but here is where we assign the image. We click there and you search for the image. New map. There it is. We will see later on that we can actually uh, change the, the size of the image and so on. But let's just do nothing whatsoever and just say, okay. Okay, that pattern color will say okay, say okay. And again, you can go if you want to check on realistic and it will show you a bit what it is. I like to remember just to see what's the impact, but it's essentially the same thing. Ray trace and um, rendering here with the rendering. So there's the pattern. Notice how it's very small and that depends on the resolution of the image. So the bigger it is, the bigger it will appear here. The obvious question would be, how do I change the size of the image when it's applied to a material such as the wall? So it's simple. We need to go to the material. 
By the way, you can go to materials here. It's the same, manage materials. I'm always selecting the wall and going edit type, blah, blah, blah. But here you can go to the same window and search for the material, which is this one here. Okay, there is. So where you change the size of the image, it's very important that you go to edit the image. It opens up a little window, which I think it's self-explanatory. It's telling us that it's a one foot the size vertical and one foot horizontal. So we need to change that. How do we change it under scale? Okay, this will lock it. So if I actually say 10, this will be also 10 and that will change to 10. So that means it's gonna be 10 foot by 10 foot. So if I say done, okay, that should change automatically to 10. Just as simple as that. You want a bigger materials. By the way, Ron, you should always name things a little bit better than your professor does because if you don't see it in the list, you're gonna have to search for it. And it's always good to have logical naming so you can search logically because otherwise you're not gonna find what you want. So appearance, edit image. Uh, let's just make it very big. Now that's 2020, it's always gonna be like that, but I could also say, hey, give me, unlock the restriction, the constraints. And then I can say that, for example, this is 30 and the other one is 20, you know? So they have different proportions or vice versa. You can say 30 and this is 20. Done. Okay. There you go. So that would be the thing. If I render this thing, every time you change materials, the whole rendering scene changes. So uh, oftentimes you need to uh, readjust your exposure levels here because it might be suddenly too bright. If you have a dark floor, then you need a different adjust exposure. And then if you change it to bright, it's gonna start illuminating everything because the sun reflects and so on. So that's the rendering. The, I think the roof was a wood panel. The, there's a concrete, whatever, I don't remember the floor. And then this color thing. No? The obvious thing that we come in, uh, it's a bad thing is like, the pattern has a black line here. Why? Well, this is very simple. If we need to just check on, on uh, Photoshop, what is on the edge. And the edge is actually a line that is black. So that's going to be there. How can we change that? Well, we crop it. Shortcut C as in, and you take it there. You press enter, that out of the way. There's two lines there, C. C. Enter. Is there a line on the top and the bottom? Yes. See, to crop, take it away. See, take it away. Save the image. Go back to Revit. Now, the pants, it should adapt itself like automatically, but maybe not. So what we might need to do is go to materials again, just refresh what image is the one that it should be using. So it's just under appearance. Maybe it has changed it, not yet. You go here, say image. Maybe you want to just even to make sure you remove it and add it again. It's not a big deal. It doesn't take more than two seconds, so. And I still see the black line, so I'm not sure if I still have them. Nah. Okay.
still there. So that makes me think that it is still there here somewhere. I don't know where. It doesn't seem like so. What I'm going to do is save as because maybe that makes a difference and call it a. Oh, I know what happened. I was say, I was actually cropping the PNG. So that's the problem. So it never changed actually the new mat. So I'm going to overwrite that one, replace it, go back to Revit. Should be done already, that's my guess. Let's see. There you go. So now there's no black line. I removed it from Photoshop. It's not here anymore. So it's all about fixing a little bit. Now, what is the next problem? Our next problem is clear. This pattern does not match with itself when it's not located in the next. Um, let's call it tile element. So what do we do? This is what we do. We go to Photoshop. Um, we're gonna do save us. Well, actually no, we're gonna do edit image here. We're gonna do image canvas size. Canvas size mean the, the size you can say in this direction I wanna grow and you can say with double of whatever is here. So you pour in, then look what happens. It just goes the canvas behind growth. Now I can select present M, which is the selection tool here. Control C, Control V. I'm going to move it here. Now it's the same place here. I'm going to right click, free transform. Right click again, flip horizontal. What happened? It's the same image flipped. So it will match itself exactly. No, I could even do it vertically. I can say canvas size, I can say here 14. Down, I'm gonna actually flatten this with Control Shift E and I'm gonna select with M, shortcut, Control C and V, bring it down. Make free transform, right click, flip vertically. Now with a strong pattern of this, it's very obvious what I'm doing, but if you have a break, which I'm gonna do afterwards, this works quite better now. What does that mean? This means that this side will match this one, the top with the bottom, etc. etc. I'm gonna uh, flatten this, save as, and you can call it the same, you pick, but instead of new map, you can show new map large or something like that. Okay, go back to Revit, materials. Same one, appearance. Or in this case, I do need to select a different one. So I'm gonna say, give me a different image because I changed the naming. Select the large option. Still have to edit it. And maybe this could be a little bit smaller now. Twenty. Let's see how it looks. Okay. Maybe we can grow in that direction. So with it. Um, I make this twenty five, for example.
okay, why not? Could be bigger, could be smaller, but now they're matching. It's not like perfect, but at least there's no clear like mistaken issue there. So what other things we can do? We have placed an image, but we can definitely give some reflection to that same image. So we go to appearance, you have reflectivity, you can change the type of reflections, it could be very strong or very mild, that's up to you. Um, you can do self-illumination, you can add a bump filling, add the bump, it's just an issue of texture, so you can add that. Um, but, you know, I'm going to do it, the bump with a different option now. Um, not sure the reflections you, you should change depending because it's like very metallic. You want to make a very small, very respectful of the image. And by the way, you can also in the edit image, you can change some other settings related to positioning. You, know, you can also repeat it in different ways. If you want it to repeat or not, you can rotate the pattern. So it will do something weird like that. Why not? It's a pattern that's rotated. Um, you can also change the brightness of it. So, you know, there's some basic feeling, uh, brightness and contrast issues here. You know, those are very basic things you can do to action and so on. And that would be your material. So when you render it and you're good to go, you can send it to high and see render here. Let's see how it looks. It's reflecting a little bit and it has the image associated. So you get the idea. Okay, I'm gonna do another one very fast, which is what about the floor? Like a bit more serious material. Let's say in the floor we have, a, we added I think here a stone floor. So I'm gonna add a new material with a particular image of the material that we want. So new material, right click, rename. I'm gonna do a brick, brick new map, for example. So, this, you know, there are many bricks here, but I'm just, for the sake of it, let's imagine you want a specific brick. Uh, again, brick, 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 ceramic. So I guess that would be, you can select many options here, but let's imagine you don't have the brick that you want to, I can't find it here. I have to create my own. So I'm gonna go to, to Google. And I always recommend say brick and don't leave it there as in say pattern material or something like that to make sure you get a more two dimensional shot of this. So this wouldn't work, this is a no, no. All of the rest are looking good, but whenever there's perspective, no, no, okay we need to get a two-dimensional break. Let's say we like, so that one wouldn't work. It's a little bit different. And the more parallel the lines, the better. So, and if they correspond bottom and top, even better. Let's say this one. And there are many there. So, you know, it used to be a time where you had to um, create your own. And, Notice what happens in this one. It has like a watermark because they're actually, they're not free. They're trying to get money out of it, which everybody wants to get money out of something. So I recommend you don't have obviously watermark. Save image as a JPEG already. And once say break, go back to Revit. That's the material I created new. And appearance with the image. Brick material, open here, there. I'm gonna just for now say okay and apply just to see how it looks. So there it is, it's very, very small. So we need to obviously change it. Let's go to materials. Under brick materials, appearance, 
we can change and edit this to make it larger. I say 10, down, okay. Maybe it's too big now, so we can reduce it, but at least I, I'm in the correct direction right now. That's a brick. Well, I think this image is, is matching nicely each other, so I don't have to fix it, but otherwise you will have to do the same Photoshop arrangement, so it expands the same. Now, brick has a little reflection, but not that much. And the thing about reflection or bump, so we can have a feeling of texture, is that we can assign a black and white image. Okay, so how do we do that? We go to Photoshop. Desktop, let's select our material. And oh, you see how the quality is very bad, so it's not going to come ideally uh, this one. But anyway, you can do a couple of things. You can do a save as and call it brick material black and white. You're going to go to image adjustments and desaturate this image. So it's a grayscale image. And then you're also gonna say brands and content. You can do that a couple of times. The ideal situation is where uh, there's a black and white uh, sit, um, division between one and another one. Yeah, that would be black and white. And then you want to come to Revit. And here under Bump, you can click Yes. It's going to ask you what image you want to use as a bump. The bump is basically push and pull. Give a feeling of push and pull. And you need a black and white image. Or you can use the same one, by the way. And it will do push and will automatically do the desaturation. You say OK. I don't know if we can see it here, but the preview should start having a bit of the feeling of that texture. You see how? So basically it's pushing the wide different than the black. So what we could do is probably here invert control I and then save. So the black comes in and the white stays out. So that would be the best thing to do. There is. So now the black is, the black is coming in, which is the ground. Okay, you can obviously intensify this by just changing this amount here. So the more, the stronger it is, I'm gonna do exaggerated. It's gonna push that much more. I'm gonna leave it where it is normally, like the 30, 20 or something like that. Do not push it too much because it gets crazy. Okay, you don't, you're not gonna see it much there. And I'm gonna add a little reflection as well. So basically appearance and reflectivity. And I'm very little because the brick, unless it's a polished one, it shouldn't be much of a reflective material. No? That's the pen. And you say, okay. So that's how you construct that, your own material. There's a serious pattern like this one, or it's a more funky one. You can do all kinds of things. Um, so now I'm going to render this, see how it looks. So obviously it's a very, very low resolution. We will talk a little bit about the background. That's a this simple and more complex ways to solve that. You can place an image on their background. 
or you can make it transparent and then in Photoshop do it yourself. Or you can build up a little more of the city around, put a couple of trees, for example, go to 3D, place a couple of trees. They always give a nice shadow. You can place large trees. Uh, you can always go to the view. Place some trees here and there to have a feeling of a, you know, exteriority kind of thing. And sometimes even nice to put a tree to create a shadow that come, that, you know, it will bring the shadow in a little bit into the scene. Let me see if I can do that. This is the tree right there, this shadow. So, you know, you're tricking, you probably say, well, there's not a tree there. Maybe that tree is nice for you or not, but you can click also that image. Again, so I would recommend once you're done and you're happy with it, you do a draft rendering. We have two minutes, so that's pretty much it. Let's see if it comes out the draft. Yeah, I would recommend changing maybe the trees of the background. You can put a couple of persons walking outside, it depends on how it looks. But for now, I would recommend just keep it simple. Um, in all ways. So notice how the shadow of the tree is right there. It gives it a bit more. Okay, so you say, let's imagine you like it. There's something going on that's nice. Once you're happy with that, I recommend that you set it to medium high or best. No, it's gonna take longer time for you to render this, but it's gonna look much better. The next level is you want to do it even faster we will see how we can actually render this uh, with a cloud system. And we will see that next class. So there's uh, computers that out of this comes that you can render with their computers very fast and do it quite straightforward. And we'll talk about the next class. Okay, let me stop the recording.